Optimizing raster images, JPEGs, pings, and GIFs in CodeKit is really straightforward. Let's start with pings. I'll select this set of images over here, and my right-hand inspector changes to show me information about them. There's 11 images in the set, and altogether they take up 3.3 megabytes currently. Now there's two other sections to this inspector pane. Down here in the middle are optimization options that apply to ping files. And then at the bottom is my usual output path area that just tells CodeKit where it should write the processed output files. Let's see what happens if we optimize these files with just the default settings that CodeKit ships with. So I'll hit optimize all. The app runs through those 11 files and we can see they now take up just 1.2 megabytes on disk or a savings of 64.3%. Well, that seems too good to be true. How did we do that? Let's take a closer look at these options. The default ping optimizer in CodeKit is a tool called PingQuant here. Now, PingQuant is basically black magic. The way it works is it opens up ping file and says, okay, I've got this file here. It has thousands of colors in it. What are the 256 colors I can use to show this file with the same visual quality? It figures those out and then changes every pixel to be one of those 256 colors. This gives us really great file size savings, but it's technically a lossy optimization since the actual data that makes up our image is being changed. That said, you will usually need a magnifying glass to see any difference between the input and output images. The human eye just isn't that great at detecting little subtle changes in color. So, PingQuant can give us really big file savings, and we won't even tell a visual difference between the original and the optimized image, in most cases. Sometimes, on certain images, such as those containing fog or clouds, you'll start to see a little banding in those subtle gradients. And in that case, you can select just that image and change to the lossless optimizer, which is OptiPing here. Now, the way OptiPing works is it opens up the ping file, discards all of the extra metadata, and then tries compressing the image a bunch of different ways to see which way works the best. But the trade-off is you barely get any file size reduction because you're not actually changing any of the data that makes up the image. So for example, here, we get only about a 0.6% reduction in file size if we use the lossless optimizer. For some images though, that's the right choice. I would highly recommend you try PingQuant before switching to the lossless optimizer though, because the file size savings are absolutely worth it. They will massively speed up your website. The story is pretty similar for JPEGs. Here I've got one selected that's currently eight megabytes, but unlike pings, there's only one JPEG optimizer in CodeKit. And if you set its target quality to 100%, it runs losslessly, which again means no discarding image data, but also very small file size reductions. For most high quality JPEGs, you can really back this quality down to 85 or even 80% before you'll start to see any kind of visual artifacts in the output image. Now you can do that image by image so that you can set a custom quality for different images that need it, or you can affect all JPEGs at once by going into project settings, languages, JPEG, and then toggling the quality slider here. So I'll back this off to about 81%, come back to my files list and see that's been applied to my selected image. Let's optimize it. And we can see that the file went from eight megabytes down to 1.4 for a savings of 82.1%. It's gotta look crappy though, right? Let's take a look. Here's the images folder. I'll open the original source JPEG, which is Aura right here. And we can see it's a very nice looking desktop wallpaper. And then if I back over here to my build folder where the output image is, Aura.jpg, I'll open that one. And here they are side by side. And you can see that the optimized image on the right looks almost identical to the human eye. Even all the detail in the star field here is virtually indistinguishable from the original input image. It's just that this one over here is 80% smaller. There's one more thing to be aware of. Normally, CodeKit will not allow you to assign an output path such that the output overwrites the input file. Images are the one exception to this you can optimize images in place if you choose to. Now, today, we've been using a build folder for our project here, so these optimized images are being created in an entirely separate folder. They're not overwriting the input image. That's the way I recommend that you do it. But if you do choose to optimize images in place, and you also use lossy optimizations, make sure that you only run that once. 
Otherwise, you'll degrade your image quality over time. 